in this video you want to use the Poisson summation formula to derive another formula, another important formula that uh, will help us find the analytic continuation of the Riemann zeta function. So I want to consider the following summation. Summation with the index n going from minus infinity to plus infinity e to the minus n squared pi x, like this. And if we use Poisson summation uh, formula, we know that we can rewrite this by transforming, by, by considering the Fourier transform of this function. Now, we have to be a little careful here when we consider the Fourier transform of this function because you can see that it is a function of n squared and also x. So you might think that we have to transform over x. But if you think about the formula that we derived by considering the Poisson summation formula, then we have to transform over n, actually, because we are summing over n. And here, what we have, so if we rewrite the formula as n minus, from minus infinity to plus infinity, here we have the transform of this function, let's call it, uh, for now, let's call it f at, then we have to evaluate it at n, right? So we have to transform over n, we have to transform this variable to another variable that we call n. So we have to be careful, and in order to avoid getting confused, I will decide, I, I, I'm going to do sum over k, so this is my decision. Therefore, we have to calculate the Fourier transform that I will rewrite like this, of the function e to the minus n squared pi x, I have to transform over the variable n, and then the transform will go from n, let's say, to k. Therefore, here, this, this will be a function of k. So we have to sum over k, right? So this is the starting point. And um, as soon as, so let's say, as long as you realize that you have to transform the variable n, uh, which is maybe the um, tricky thing at the beginning because you might say, well, if you don't think about it, you might transform this function over x, but you actually have to transform over n. And so let's do let's do this calculation. We have to calculate the Fourier transform of e to the minus n squared by x over n. So it's an integral from minus infinity to plus infinity, e to the minus n squared by x. And then here we have e to the minus 2 pi i k n dn, like this. So remember that we are considering uh, frequencies, not angular frequencies. So here we have a factor of 2 pi. And it is, it is not really important whether you put a minus or a plus here because uh, of the, uh, let's say, of the fact that uh, we are considering a real function on the left. So this is a real function. Therefore, it means that we can also consider the complex conjugate, and therefore we can put either a plus or a minus. It doesn't really matter, but let's not uh, waste too much time uh, discussing this point. Then, this is now just a matter of calculating uh, this integral. So we have integral from minus infinity to plus infinity. We can rewrite it as e to the minus n squared pi x plus 2 pi i k n dn. And now we can rewrite this argument here. So n squared pi x plus 2 pi i k n. We are going to rewrite it by considering the square of something which contains uh, n. So we can rewrite it as n square root of pi x plus square root of pi over x i k squared plus pi over x k squared. So this will be helpful because uh, it will reduce the, the integral above to a Gaussian integral. So it will be easy to calculate in this uh, fashion. So this will be equal to, now we have integral from minus infinity to plus infinity, e to the minus n square root of pi x plus square root of pi over x i k squared. And then here we have the differential of uh, n, but you can rewrite it as the differential of square root of pi x n 
times 1 over square root of pi x e to the minus pi over x k squared. So in the differential here, you can also put a constant. If you want, you can add a constant, and this constant can be set equal to this one. So you have plus square root of pi over x i k. So it is a constant because uh, I'm considering the variable to be n, right? So this will be treated as a constant. And now this is basically just the Gaussian integral. It's like the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity e to the minus x squared dx. Now, I mean, one, one should be a little bit more rigorous here because we have a constant which is actually a complex constant. So we have i here. But it can be made more rigorous and you can, uh, at the end of the day, you can say that this is coincident with the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity e to the minus x squared dx, which is just equal to the square root of pi. So the result that you get here is simply 1 over square root of x e to the minus pi over x k squared. Now, the formula that we derived is the following. So we have summation over n from minus infinity to plus infinity e to the minus n squared pi x and this is equal to 1 over square root of x. And then here you have another summation. The summation over this uh, exponential here. So if you want to rewrite it in terms of the same index n, you simply have to replace k with n here. So you have e to the minus pi over x n squared. And this is a formula that we will use in uh, deriving the analytic continuation of the Riemann zeta function.